The U.S. population is increasing very, very fast. Unlike other countries around the world in the first world, we are actually having a population increase. So why are certain cities in America, especially some of the coastal cities, having population declines? Well, it's because they spend all their money on really wild things like the migrant crisis. When you spend literally every penny on it, it's a massive turnoff for a lot of people. And of course, if you never address the crime issue, the shoplifting issue, or basically robbery issues, businesses and employees and people will leave. New York City is no exception to that rule. In fact, many people have left New York in the past three years and nobody is coming back ever again. So check this out. New York City's total population loss since 2020 has now reached 500 46,000 people, wiping out most of the 2010 and 2020 gain of 629,000 people. And this is a big deal. Now, Manhattan essentially was unchanged. In fact, it was even up a little bit. But Stat Island went down and the other boroughs like Brooklyn, Queens, and the Bronx have all lost population. The reason why Manhattan still stayed pretty strong is Manhattan has very expensive rents. Manhattan is where all the big banking corporations are. So most of the bankers, most of those ultra wealthy guys in Manhattan, they will just stay there. It's like, screw it. But a lot of the guys in Brooklyn, Staten Island, especially the middle class individuals, people who also work decently high income jobs are all leaving. Most people who are leaving New York City are going to be your accountants, even some of your nurses, some of your doctors, some of your businessmen. You know, you got some lawyers leaving. This is no longer the place where it's easy to do business anymore. Considering that New York City is spending every single penny on the migrant crisis, no wonder everyone is leaving this city. Look at this, 158 companies flee New York along with a trillion dollars of assets. And this is written back in 2013 and even 2013 where we saw so many of these companies leaving. Nobody really wants to stay here anymore. And with so many New Yorkers not just leaving the city but also the states, businesses are leaving. And according to a report by Bloomberg, many of them are heading to Florida or Tennessee, basically Tampa, Miami, or Nashville. And these firms are going to lower cost states. And New Yorkers actually feel like they get a better quality life in several of the other locations. And I really don't blame them, guys, especially how New York is kind of anti-business recently and how heavy the taxes are. Not to mention, do you really want to stay in a place where all they do every single day is just a migrant crisis? Now, another thing to keep in mind is many real estate investors and even regular investors are getting a little bit scared about what's happening to New York over the Trump situation. Because what happened to Trump was he is accused and guilty of fraud, of forced to pay $355 million, or else one of his buildings in New York City gets seized. There's a lot of threats about that, and the reason why is a little bit unknown. Many celebrity investors from O'Leary to Grant Cardone all said it was very politically driven because Trump didn't really do anything wrong. In fact, the real estate practices and all the borrowing he did was in line with all the other major real estate companies. So that's also kind of scary. And no wonder many investors are kind of just discontinuing work in New York City or investing little amounts into it. And by the way, real estate development in New York City is no longer super profitable. If you make a very, very high-end luxury skyscraper back in like 2015, 2014, it will easily sell out. But it's 2024 and nobody is buying any more of these New York City condos. In fact, most of these ultra-luxury buildings anyway are sitting empty. New York City is going broke, and do you really want to live in a broke city? They're spending almost $400 per day to house thousands of migrants as Mayor Eric Adams tries to slash the spending. This is costing New York City so much crazy money. They cannot afford to keep this up. This is a hyper expensive thing to do, and New York is kind of noticing this. Eric Adams is doing damage control by doing a complete U-turn on the migrant crisis, evicting migrants from shelters after 30 days, offering free plane and bus takers to get out of New York City, and even trying to get some of the migrants up to New York upstate just to save a little money. They're spending about $10 million a day, guys, which is a really, really high-end amount. $10 million a day is not cheap at all. And this is why New York is simply going broke. Many of the biggest tech guys and finance CEOs are all saying that Miami could be the next financial capital of America. This is not by me. This is by Ken Griffin, the CEO of Citadel, who moved his whole entire operation and hundreds of employees from Chicago to Miami. And now he's having a better quality of life. Jeff Bezos moved from Seattle to Miami. And now Miami is getting its very, very first trading floor. It's dubbed Wall Street South in a very symbolic gesture just to show New York City and other places that they're not just beaches and hospitality. They're also a very, very serious competitor in terms of finance. So Miami could be the new up and coming Wall Street, especially with better temperatures, better weather, low taxes, and also enormous amounts of business incentives and also low crime. 
this has become the next hotspot for America. Thanks for watching, guys. Comment below and before we leave, check out the private Discord server, guys. Patreon link below for some amazing trades. Seven day free trial, and we trade live every single day. Just like last week, we made some pretty incredible trades from just one of our traders. Six total signals, with most of them being wins. And the best one was going to be the SP 500 puts and then the video calls, making an absolutely mad amount of money. So check us out. Like, for example, we also made some trades here with some new stocks. We play around with a lot of options. And some of these calls and some of these puts are making over 100%. And plus, it's a free trial anyway. Why not check it out?